Hi everyone, I'm Rosemarie Miller here with Steven Zagor, an adjunct professor at Columbia Business School, specializing in food and restaurants, here to tell us all about an uptick in tipping. Thank you so much for joining me today, Steve. It's my, it's my pleasure. Uh, first, I have to ask, do you tip me or do I tip you after this interview? I think you should tip me. Yeah, I deserve the tip. Yeah, I think that's probably protocol. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of check off at the bottom after I'm done. <laughs> Steve. Well, while we're talking about tipping, obviously. So there is no. an uptick in automatic tip requests. What are your thoughts on that? I have multiple thoughts on it. I mean, it's it's one of these things that has kind of permeated after the pandemic. It was it was sort of trickling through the cracks before the pandemic, but but since the pandemic where people were waiting on us sort of in combat pay mode, mode because they were out there potentially contaminating their self, themselves to give us service. And it's become really prevalent. And to some degree, it's annoying. You know, you wonder what you're actually tipping for because tipping itself is for something. And for someone to, to, to give you a hamburger or give you a cup of coffee, you wonder if that's worth something. But then I also put on my business hat and I realized there is value to the employees in that tip and it's meaningful to the employees. And so I kind of look at it with a, with a grain of thought as opposed to immediately dismissing it as just an annoying thing. Well, Steve, is it up to the customers or the employers to pay the employees? I would say, it, again, it, depends on you ask a good question you it's both and the company pays the employees they pay them a salary or depending on the kind of business a base and some kind of a an amount of money and then tipping in a full service restaurant basically is part of their compensation it's counted in to what they actually make so that full service restaurants can pay lower than the minimum wage they pay what's called a tip credit wage which is a percentage of the minimum wage. In full certain in fast casual or fast food restaurants, the employees make actually a wage. They make the minimum wage or more. And the tipping is more like a, a supplement to, to increase their earnings. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of restaurants, how do you see the relationship between a bill amount and the willingness to tip? At a certain amount, let's say, I don't know, $500, are you still expected to tip 15, 20% or what? Another good question. I, I look at tipping as one of these inevitable moments like death, taxes, and tipping. You know, unfortunately, you have to pay your taxes. At some point, we're all gonna pay the piper and we have to get this sort of tipping moment past us. And it's, it's part of the, the ritual that we need in order to be able to to continue the uh, that that relationship of um, you know creating that uh, that transaction at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm also curious about like with automatic tip requests, is that affecting the social dynamic between customers and employees? When you say automatic, you mean? I mean when it pops open. up on the screen and. I feel like, what am I tipping you for? Is that affecting the social dynamic? Because it is awkward for me as the tipper. It is, it is. And, and not only that, the employee is staring at you while you're figuring that out. <laughs> so, you, know, you can look at tipping from two perspectives. One, you're, you're tipping for something the employee has done for you. And on the other hand, you're tipping to manage your future relationship. And when, that per when you come back in, that person remembers, oh, yes, that, that lady, she gave me a very nice tip, so I'll do something special for her. You know, tipping, if I, if I might just make a general moment here. Mm -hmm. When we eat, eating is an emotional experience. In the end of the day, we're actually all animals. And when we eat, it's an emotional bond with that restaurant or that food business. The most unpleasant part of that bond is paying. You know, we like our food, we like our service, and granted, we have bad food and bad service from time to time. 
But at the end of the day, that negative moment at the end is paid. And so what we have as a business now that we're trying to think, okay, what are they giving us? And so I'm paying this thing in a transactional way. And then I'm being asked to give something on top. And it's a little bit aggravating. It, it is aggravating, again, to the average customer because I'm getting that feeling, and again, feeling is key, that someone has their hand in my pocket and I don't really know why. So it's, it's got a lot of sort of multiple layers of concern. So if one can't afford to tip or tip appropriately, should they just stay at home? No, they should just not tip, especially in a transactional moment like that. I mean, if, if someone can't tip, and not everyone does tip at, at these businesses, um, I would certainly still go ahead because look, the business needs the money. The, the staff wants to have business there. Otherwise, it's not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm also curious about, I mean, inflation. We're all witnessing it. We go to the grocery store, we see prices are up on everything. Should we still be expected to tip? What, I've seen like 30% these days. Should we still be expected to tip with inflation while paying premium prices? Again, tipping is part of the protocol of eating out. It's, it's what we do. It's institutionalized. Yes, there's inflation. Yes, interest rates have gone up. Yes, the cost of everything has gone up. Restaurants pay more for their food. The supply chain has gotten more expensive. Food being delivered to the restaurant. Labor costs the restaurants has gone up. So everything has gone up. Yes, it's still part of what we need to do. Can you tip less? If that's feel, the feeling that you have, yes, tip less. But it's still part of the ritual at this point. So you know, I urge people to tip it bad because, again, I'm looking back on the business side of it. And none of the employees are getting wealthy. And it's an opportunity if someone does something nice for you to give them that little bit of extra, little something to make them a special moment for them. Well, Steve, and, do you... And by the way, the restaurant has the ability to change those percentages. They're not locked in. The restaurant can prescribe what the percentage tip on that tablet is, whether it's 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30. They put that in. You have to, of course, fill out which one you want, but, but the restaurant actually supplements that moment. Steve, do you believe that tipping will ever go back to pre-pandemic levels? You mean where there's no tipping in tablets? Yes. Um, I'm sorry? Yes. No, I think it has become, again, it's part of the culture now. And I think that, you know, I, I, I think it's part of who we are now. I think it's something the employees expect it. And I think it's something that we will be stuck with. It's one of those high cost of living things that like a bridge toll or something that never seems to go away, even though it was put on there for some reason to pay off something, but it never seems to go away. Hmm. All right, well, we'll keep tipping. Thank you so much for joining me today, Steve. You're welcome. And uh, where do I check off to leaving you a tip for this? <laughs> oh, I'll send you a payment method. No worries. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good one.